Let's talk about fonts and formatting fonts. So in order to get started, I just have a very simple project started. I have an index page. Uh, I have a style sheet set up, which is currently blank. Just for review, I want to make sure I remember how to link to that style sheet. So I'm gonna use the word link, colon, and then CSS and tab so that I can link to that style sheet. I get link relationship equals style sheet, which always has to be that way. And then my href is the name of the file that I'm linking to. In this case, it's styles, style.css. Uh, I don't have any text yet, so I'm going to make a paragraph. And so I'm gonna do a P and then space. I just wanna do some filler text for this conversation. So I don't need, I don't have anything specific. So we have something called lorem ipsum. And so I'm going to type in the word L-O-R-E-M and Emmett is paying attention and you can see the lorem ipsum text. So all it is is filler text. It's Greek text or uh, I don't remember what it's actually based on, but anyway, it's filler text that I can use. And so Emmett is paying attention and so I can hit tab at this point or I can type in a number. If I type in the number, then it's gonna generate 50 words of lorem ipsum text. So I'm going to now hit the tab key. So whatever number you type in, it'll generate that many words. So I'm going to use lorem 50 and tab just to de ge generate some text that I can use to demonstrate a conversation. So I have some text here. All right, great. I'm going to collapse my project explorer. So I have my index and my style sheet side by side. Oftentimes when I get started on a project, I will do something simple like create a body background color and I'll give it something weird like purple. And I'm only doing this in the short run so that way I make sure that my page is in fact linked properly. So if my background didn't turn purple, that means I did something uh, wrong. Like I might have misspelled style, for example. If I misspell style, then I'm not getting the purple background. I know that I've got an error, so I need to fix the error before I start adding a whole bunch of other styles. So that way, again, if I troubleshoot in small pieces, then I know where to, uh, to fix my problem. I'm not really interested in a body background. I know that these two are linked properly, so I'm gonna delete my test. And now I know that everything is ready to do some magic. All right, so what I wanted to demonstrate today was fonts. So I wanted to demonstrate some different uh, font formatting. And so uh, I'm going to create a selector for the paragraph and then an open and close curly brace. And let's just make it simple for the short run. I'm gonna do color and then red just to see that, yes, my paragraph is working and yes, I've got the font color of red. All right, so we also have font family. So font family, and well, let's get to font family in a minute. Let's start with font size. All right, so font size should feel comfortable to you from, for example, Word. You might give a font something like, uh, let's say 25 pixels. That makes sense to you, right? 25 pixels, and that's how big the font is. And if I make it 16, it's gonna be smaller. So what I'm gonna do is share with you um, let me close some of this up so I have a little bit more real estate. I don't really care about that index file now. So uh, I'm going to right click on my page here and go to my dev tools, my development tools. I'm in Firefox at the moment and I'm going to navigate down to that paragraph. And I demonstrated this in another video, but I'm going to do it again. So here in the dev tools in my paragraph, I can see the styles that being, are being applied. And in fact, I see the font size 25 pixels and the color red. Excellent. Now, over on the right-hand side here, I have some different tabs, layout, and I have computed. Now I'm gonna use this in a moment to talk about uh, font size. So there's different ways to calculate font size. One is to what we call hard code in this pixel size. And that's well and good, but here's the deal. If I have 25 pixels on this desktop, it looks really nice. But if I hard code 25 pixels on a phone, for example, 25 pixels is gonna get really big on a phone. So we have what we call relative measurements. So similar to saying uh, a width of our element is 50%, that 50% is gonna grow and shrink as my page grows and shrinks according to the size of the viewport or the width of the device that's, um, that's rendering my page. So we wanna do the same thing with font size when we can. 
So here's what I'm trying to get at. All right, uh, I'm going to erase 25 pixels and I'm gonna use a measurement one REM instead. One REM, which is a relative measurement. And so when I refresh my page and I look down here at my dev tools, it says font size is one REM, but look over here, my font size now is 16 pixels. So one REM is a relative measurement, which means whatever the default of the browser is, that's what I want to be. So it turns out that the default browser size for this particular browser on my desktop is 16 pixels. If you look at it on a phone, it might be eight pixels. The default size is going to change depending on the browser of the device that you're viewing the web page on. This particular browser has a default size of 16 pixels. So one REM says, whatever the default is, that's the font size that I'm going to utilize. So a relative measurement. So it's going to change then if it was on a, on a phone, for example. Relative measurement. If I do something like one, uh, let's do something easy to calculate. I'm going to do two. Two means twice the, reg, re, the, de, the default measurement. And if you look here, we should see that my font size, in fact, changed to 32 pixels. So 2 REM is twice the default. The default was 16, so 2 REM is 16 pixels. If it was on the phone, it would, I would say the phone was 8 was the default. Then 2 REM, twice it would be, therefore, uh, 16. So this is giving us the ability to be flexible according to, let, it lets the browser decide the, the font size rather than us hard coding in a size that may or may not be flexible. Let's go the other direction. So two is twice, so 0.5 then is half. And so now we should see, well, it's pretty tiny, but we should see the half size. And so you can keep going from there. I mean, all of the measurements apply. So if we do 75%, then we're three quarters. So REM is a relative measurement, and it's a better measurement to use than something that is too strict and not flexible or responsive. And we're going to learn more about responsive design as we go forward.